I'm Rudy Heinrich. I play bassoon in the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra. Some of you might be wondering, what are those MSO musicians up to now that they're not playing concerts? Well, when I'm not taking care of my kids and growing silly facial hair, I've been making lots of reads. In fact, I thought I might show you today how to make a read. You can join in at home. It'll be fun. Come on, to the read dungeon. All right, the first thing you're gonna do is take a piece of tube cane. Now's not a great time to fly to France to buy some, but you can order some online or just go saw the leg off that cane chair on your back porch. Now, cane doesn't grow completely in a circle. It's oval shaped. So I'm gonna take my calipers here to find the skinny part of the oval. I'm gonna make a little X here so that I get even pieces across that oval. So I've got that marked. Now I'm gonna take an old kitchen knife Make sure that my tetanus shots are up to date. And I'm going to split the cane like this. And then I'll split each of the individual pieces in two. I'll end up with four all together. Like so. All right, now that we've split our cane into four pieces, we take one of those pieces and it's time to cut it to 120 millimeters in length. We're going to use this machine right here that's called a guillotine. It's named after the charming French revolutionary implement, and it even has a similarly satisfying sound. We'll take off this end and the other end. Ah, let them eat cane. And now we have a 120 millimeter piece of cane. Next, we're going to pre-gouge it. Pre-gouging is gouging before you gouge for even more gouging fun. I'll break it to you right now. Sorry guys, there's no post gouger. All right, here we go. I'll take my dowel and I'll push it through the pre-gouger and we'll cut off the excess. And now we're ready to gouge. I'll put it on my gouger bed here and make sure it's right in the center. And now this gouger is gonna take the inside of the cane out and take it down to the proper width. And there you have a gouged piece of cane. And also we got some shavings that you can compost and put in your garden in case the reed doesn't turn out, at least you've accomplished something. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back upstairs from the reed dungeon. We're in the practice room now, and it's time to profile our cane. The profiler is gonna take the bark off the top here. For those of you with some woodworking experience, this is kind of like a planer on a guide. For those of you with no woodworking experience, this is a clickety-clackety reed-making machine. This is also the part of the reed-making process where oval players make fun of us. So we attach the cane to the barrel here. Secure it with these bands. And here we go. There is my profiled piece of cane. You see we've taken the bark off. And now the next thing to do is to shape it. Today I'm going to use a Rieger 1A shaper. If you don't have a Rieger 1A, feel free to borrow one from your neighbor. I'm going to use the light here to make sure it's lined up on the shaper. And this is a good time to check and make sure that your Band-Aid supply is up to date. And then we shape. Now I have a shaped piece of cane, but don't worry friends, we still got a long way to go. All right, for those of you following along at home, it's time to make a blank. First thing we're gonna do is score the cane. That helps it break in a controlled way. So here we go, we're scoring the cane. Great, now we have a scored piece of cane. We're gonna do just a quick little bevel here to make the sides line up. I'm gonna do this kind of the fast way so that I don't overtax your attention span. I know that I've already overtaxed my own. Here we go. And now we're gonna form the blank. The blank is what you call a reed before you cut the tip off. 
the blank is the, also the process of the reed making that happens before your hopes are all dashed and you cut the tip off and find out that it's terrible. So I take some 22 gauge brass wire and I wrap it around there and give it a twist. That holds the two sides together. Use my fancy pliers and give it a little extra twist. And then I wrap some string around it. All of this is to kind of help the cane break in a controlled manner, which is very similar to my philosophy on child rearing. So here we go. All right, we've wrapped it in string. Give it a little dip in our water. This here is a mandrill. This is what we use to make the cane round so it will fit on the bassoon. Take our fancy pliers again, kind of mash it to get round. Take that string back off. And we, then we are going to add a couple more wires. Here's the bottom wire. One of my three favorite wires is the bottom wire. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you have yourself a blank. Congratulations. All right, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations on making it this far. I hope you at home have a good looking reed like this one. So now we're going to glue the reed to keep it together. So give your reed about a day to rest before you do this, give it a chance to dry. This is one of my favorite parts of the reed making process because it's right before you find out just how bad your reed's gonna be. So I'm gonna squeeze that glue on there like so. All right, and the last thing we have to do is cut the tip off and give it a scrape. Be right back in a moment. All right, friends at home, we're almost there. It's time to cut off the tip of our reed and see just how bad it is. So I made a little mark here, five millimeters from the tip of the reed. I'm gonna put it on my fancy pants reed cutter. Now we have our reed cut to the proper length. And for the very last step in the process, we scrape the reed. If you come see the MSO very often, you'll see me occasionally frantically doing this right before a concert, brushing a little can off my tux as we're about ready to play. So bear with me here, we're gonna do some scraping. All right, so we put just the very first scrape into our reed. Let's give it a crow and see what we get. Hey, not bad. So there's a whole lot more to it than that, of course, but I think this video is already boring enough. So I hope you've enjoyed making a read with me. If it turns out great, send it into the symphony. I'll play it on the next concert. So have fun with all of your read making and hope to see you at the symphony soon.